Welcome everybody to another Tuesday night in the spotlight. Tonight I have joining me Tammy Arbor and Tammy is here to share her experiences with grief and healing and how to find joy in your life after hardship. In 2013, Tammy's Nana and stepfather Dave passed away within three weeks of each other. One year later, her only daughter and best friend Alicia, who we also call Rosie, was yes. murdered at 23 years old and one and a half years after that, her father passed away as well. These events woke Tammy's gifts to the point that she could no longer stay in the spiritual closet any longer. Her incredible need to stay connected to her daughter has been the driving force behind it all. And as Tammy says, her daughter is an incredible spirit and guides her every day. And I can attest to that. <laughs> Tammy is living a very grateful and blessed life in spite of the traumas and tragedies that she's faced as a child and as an adult. In the past six and a half years, with the guidance of her daughter, Tammy has become a Reiki level two practitioner an Ohana Healing Level 1 practitioner, a certified uh, Indian head massage practitioner, and she has diplomas in child and adult psychology, hospice training, certified death doula. She completed her BFO training, as well as many mediumship channeling, light language, and healing modalities along the way. Tammy dedicates her education and soul to spirit and will never look back. The healing has been incredible, she says. And you guys can connect with Tammy via email at angelicintuitivetouch at gmail.com. And I'll be putting that into the comment feeds as well. Um, that way you guys can connect with her. So so Tammy, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to be here, and I'm super grateful for this opportunity to reach out and hopefully spread some hope and healing for people that are grieving and have walked the path I have walked, or a slightly different one, possibly, and give them a little bit of hope um, that it's okay to live a guilt-free life, a fear-free life, and not feel bad that you are alive, even though you've said goodbye to loved ones, um, be it a child, a parent, a partner, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's different kinds of grief, but they're all grief. My experience has been multidimensional. Um, and if others, it's just one person, it doesn't matter. It's grief is grief. There's five stages, as they say, but not everything's in order of five stages. It happens very random. It happens throughout life, but you can still have a beautiful, joyful life and really connect with that loved one or those loved ones. If you just open up your heart and allow it and the beautiful oxygen that that gives me, I always say that's my oxygen to live is because I have that opportunity, but it, it's something I've opened up to and surrendered to because I don't have an option to change it. So I thought, well, you know what? I'm not going to lose that connection. And it's brought my life to just the most amazing place. So I hope to share some of that and some hope for people that are in a dark place right now or really low, sad grief and stuck there that they can actually see a little bit of light that comes through and just embrace even that little piece so that they can sort of walk out of the darkness and like open it up and the gifts they're gonna receive. It's just fabulous. So awesome. I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited to have you here. And you. when I hear your story, I'm so inspired by you and so inspired by the work that you've done, the healing that you bring to other people, your complete openness to people about the whole journey. And mm -hmm. I would love to know, because it's like you found a secret formula, honestly, about how to move through grief. So you experience so many losses, one after the other, and not like a friend kind of loss. It was very important people in your life. So how were you able to rebuild yourself after that or put the pieces back together after all of that? Um, well... For myself personally, I grew up with a mother, thank God, was very open to spirit, very open to alternative things, very close to God, as I am, but also very open to other spiritual connections. So I've always had that. And all my life, I've felt it, I've experienced it, they've shown up on the hardest times in my life, right at the perfect moment. And and then I would drift off and have my regular life and they would disappear again, but they were really always there. But when this happened, it was my grandmother and then my stepfather, who I love very, very much, like another father. I was lucky to have two. So good for me. <laughs> but they, you know, I understood my grandmother was 97 
So in my logical mind, I'm like, that makes sense. I understood it. I accepted it. She had a beautiful life. She was very close to spirit herself and she went right to heaven in my eyes. You know, I, I, that I kind of logically went there. My stepfather had cancer. He was 80. He was suffering. He, you know, to me, it was a blessing, not that he was gone, but that he wasn't suffering anymore. And again, he had lived a great life and I knew he was going to a better place because I knew spirit and my daughter though, that was a whole other thing. I, it was a year later and murder is one thing. I mean, the word itself has an energy behind it. That's really dramatic, I guess. Um, but to have that happen at 23, um, just threw me into a, a tailspin and the trauma of it and all of it. But in the hospital, she was on life support for four days. They brought her back, which was a miracle in my eyes. And I think she did that for our sake. I know that now, actually, after talking to her. Yeah. Um, so we could say goodbye and the family could come together and all of that. But um, even in the hospital, I could hear her talking to me and I could hear her telling me, to tell the police certain things because there was security and all this stuff. And I was, they were thinking I was this crazy grieving mother and I was so frustrated, but my mother actually said, I hear you too. I hear it too. So she was the only one that gave me the comfort that I wasn't actually going crazy, but I could hear her say, mom, tell them this, tell them this. So I was doing those things and I have a son, so I'm trying to keep it together for him and my, you know, that's what we do. Right. So I guess I was in shock in a lot of ways as well. But as her, in that moment, like literally it started that right in that moment that she was already communicating. So I'm thinking she's still on life support. So she's not passed. But when she finally did pass, I, I heard from her six weeks later, it was my birthday and I was upset and I was, it was, you know, you didn't want to wake up or whatever. And I, she held my hand to wake me up. And it was so beautiful. And I thought, am I going crazy? And I could feel her squeezing it. And I thought, oh my gosh, she's right here. And then like, that was crazy for me. Makes me emotional, but it was real, you know? Yeah. Sorry. It's still real, but the beauty of it is it overwhelms my heart in a good way, not in a sad way, in a really positive way that she was relentless in saying, mom, I'm right here. Yeah. This is not over yet. Are you kidding me? And you can't really hear it when you're in the deep grief or I couldn't, but six weeks later, and ironically that day was the first day I signed up for grief counseling with BFO. Cause I knew we needed it. I knew we needed something. And so I had this beautiful gift in the morning and then I go and I just talked about her because I love hearing about her. I love her voice. I love hearing her name. I love talking like she's right here because she is totally. Yeah. Um, and I think people should hopefully do that because as people that watch people that grieve, it's like they don't want to mention the name in case it hurts their feelings or reminds them of something, but they're still want to hear about these people, be it your daughter, your father, your mother, your friend, your spouse. It's beautiful because they're still alive and they love to be talked about. So after the, the March, the birthday, I was feeling really depressed after that. And around the first week of May, I was actually suicidal, but didn't tell anybody, including my husband, <laughs> but I was done. I was like, I can't do this. It's too much. Yeah. So I went in my room and I just said, Alicia, you're the only one that can help me here. I know it. And I don't know why I knew that. It probably wasn't true, but that's how I felt. And I honestly, she's just, the phone rang that got me out of the thought process. And it was a friend of mine checking on me. And I thought, oh, you sneaky bugger. <laughs> As she got me out of that feeling sorry for me, that dark place I was going in, right? Yeah. And my husband was literally in the other room, but I didn't even mention it to even reach out to him and which was crazy, but he was in his own grief. And I didn't think maybe he was strong enough or I didn't want to add to his grief. I don't know what it was to be honest, but I knew she could help. And she did. And she interrupted my thoughts. My friend was making me laugh and checking up and I felt cared for. Three days later, my sister-in-law goes to a medium for her own healing. Yeah. And she shows up at my house randomly. And I'm like, what is happening? She goes, I went to a medium and 
here's the tape and it's all Alicia and it's all for you. And she told me to make sure this is for you because you need it. And it, that was the moment that it saved my life, literally and figuratively. And I thought, oh my gosh, this girl is a rock star. I always say that. She is relentless and they never really, there's no death. It doesn't exist. Life is eternal. Souls are eternal. The body just doesn't last forever. But I can attest to that. It is the most beautiful gift. After that moment, I thought, hmm, you know what? I cannot believe that she is contacting me, holding my hand, reaching out to me and alive, and then still think she's dead. I thought this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like either I believe it or I don't believe it. But I did teeter totter now and then, which I think is normal. But I had a friend of mine that reminded me because she lost a daughter in a car accident and she's a medium and all the gifts come flowing with her daughter's death 15 years ago. But she said to me, Tammy, if you believe that you really can connect and that there's someone there, how, how can you grieve that she's never, you're never going to see her again. She's there with you. And I thought, you're so smart. And it's so simple. So that was the open door for me. And then she guided me and she came to me and said, mom, I am going to lay. And she literally put her hands like this, lay it all out for you. Just trust me. Beautiful. And I thought, are you my mother now? You little brat. <laughs> but she was, and she was guiding me with the most beautiful love. She could feel the pain and, you know, not to sugarcoat everything it wasn't as smooth as I'm explaining it yes I had lots of down days lots of hard times lots of crying lots of angry at God lots of blaming or what poor me or what did I do wrong I had so many of those natural things as a parent but 23 murdered I I couldn't get my head around it like my grandmother my stepfather and even my father he had cancer he wasn't well I was sad but I got it. I understood that this was like the process, but you should never outlive your children is in my head, right? Yeah. No one gave us those rules. We invented those rules. No one gave us promises that this wouldn't happen. So I learned very quickly, life does what life does and you either roll with it or you don't. And I chose to absolutely embrace my life. And Alicia says, mom, I'm doing more here than I ever, ever could do there. And she had a choice. She told me I had a choice to live or not to live. But if I lived, I would have been a vegetable. And I saw the life that you and dad would have had. And I made promises and I was making deals with God. I was doing a lot when she was on life support. Like, I, will, I don't care what I have to do. Just let this kid live. Yeah. But she said, mom, I saw that. And it, you wouldn't have wanted that life. And I wouldn't have wanted that life. So I chose to go because you get choices. And I learned so much from her because I didn't know that. And I thought at the time I was like, wow, why did you choose to go? But now I am so grateful. And what kind of mother says that? But I'm so grateful. Number one, I know where she is. She's not physically here, but she's really here more now than when she was alive. If you want the truth, she was busy having a life when she was here. Now she's with me like She's my creeper, I call her. <laughs> my beautiful little creeper. She's so yeah. fun. She's so exciting. And she's always my biggest fan. Um, she's my healer. She's my teacher. She's everything. And my father comes, my stepfather, my grandmother. I get all these lovely, beautiful souls that never left me. And it's because I've opened up and I trusted that I know that the love I had for them here, there's no way it could disappear. I just didn't believe it in my soul. So I thought, no, this can't be real. This would not be how the universe works. So I just opened up and I thought, you're never going to harm me because you never did. And even if you did, you know more up there. That's, a, that's love. That's pure love. And they learn the lessons. They go through what they have to go through, as we all will. But the love is so powerful. And when you let that in, it's hard to have a bad life when you let that much love in you. And when you allow the beautiful miracles that come with that and the beautiful gifts, I guess, is how I feel. She guided me to do Reiki. I did. My mom is a Reiki master. I grew up with like, these were things in my life, but I never really thought about doing it. But Alicia says, mom, I want you to do this. 
Yeah. And she did it for a reason. It opened me up more to spirit. It opened me up for more of my purpose. It opened me up for connecting with people because I was becoming a recluse because I was so sad. And I was, I didn't want to be the mother of the murdered kid. And oh, let's talk about, you know, that again, or the awkwardness of other, it was just so difficult. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm just going to work, go home, work, go home. And that wasn't healthy. So she really opened up my life. And then I met people like you and I met all such a beautiful group of people. My life took a 180 turn, which was really obvious to me why she had to pass was that it was her time. Number one, her contract was up. She's already confirmed that she's done everything she had to do. She chose that exit point long before she came here. Um, I chose to be her mother and I chose to go through that. I just didn't remember. I often say, if I really am never going to do that again, <laughs> just going to say, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, she, she's been my guide and she's guided me into this place I am today, which is the person literally coming out of the spirit closet because they're overwhelmingly calling my name and people like yourself are, are my support group and many, many others. And I'm so grateful for that. And she guided me to all of you and to this world of tarot and numerology. And my mother really started that part of it really with me, but um, she'd just been a gift and her, her passing, her death, her crossing, however you want to talk to think word it is also a gift. And I can say that because I think she's happier now than she ever was on earth. You know, she was doing her thing the way she passed. She, she told me, mom, I was already out of the body. I didn't feel the thing. Don't worry. Yeah. So when you open up and you ask them, be patient. I know you know this, but for anyone that's viewing, be patient, talk to them with your heart and wait for the signs, wait for the words. They will always deliver. And the hope and healing you will get from that, that love, it's not, nothing compares. It's not like earth. It's, it's a different love. I mean, a parent love and a child love. There's something about it. It's just beyond description. And love isn't even enough of a word. <laughs> I don't have a word that really works, but this is the one we have. So, <laughs> yes. So that's kind of how I coped in a way. And then I just, I, lit I went for a lot of support. Though, I'm going to be honest. I went for counseling. I went for grief counseling. I went for lots of spiritual counseling because I, that was where I resonated. So I did Reiki treatments. Um, I definitely had a lot of mediumship and a lot of friends that became my friends. They weren't at the time, but just the connection and they always saw it in me, but I really, I guess I was grieving too much to really go there. And I think I was doubting myself, but with the support of all of the support I had. And eventually I started to believe in myself and go, wow, you know what? I'm doing this. So let's just get on with it. And she, we've always, we're going to be business partners. And she's like, mom, we're still business partners. I'm like, I know you're the boss of me. I know <laughs> it's hilarious. And she was a funny little bugger here. And she's still funny there. They don't change personalities. Yeah. So if your loved one that's passed was, sarcastic speak to them that way if they were shy you know approach them how you would here it's the same they don't change um it's just my life is so beautiful even though you know I can say all of those things about her and the best lesson she ever taught me I have to pass this on and I don't know if murder would be something that a lot of people would relate to here it's not a common way people pass but would however way they passed Alicia showed me mom stop saying the word murder is the word she used because it would just my heart would just stop every time and it just I don't know made my body freeze I guess and I hated the fact that that was attached to my life and her life and in our life and any of it so she said mom take the word murder and I want you to write it long ways m u r and this way. And she says, then use M. I want a new word for the M. Change up this whole word to be all different words. That's positive. What's positive? So I did um, manifesting. I did understanding why she passed. I turned them into positive things, right? R, um, redirecting my life. Um, D, you know, 
um, doing what I need to do for me. Like she, she taught me the simplest things that only spirit can do. And so if someone's loved one is cancer, try to spell it long ways. Use a new word for C, a new word for A. Try to pull something that's actually good that's in your life that begins with that. It doesn't have to be connected to that person, but if so, that's fine. And it was just a really great therapy that I used. Um, you know, if it was suicide, you know, that's a huge one. Yeah. It's similar to murder. And I used to volunteer with children, um, griefing, grief counseling with children with the murder suicide group. I used to do this, believe it or not, which was interesting because now I'm living that. Right. Yeah. So, and my husband used to be an undercover drugs and homicide detective and he used to solve murders that no one could solve. And now we're living that. So wow. it's really ironic, but the universe sets us up for these things. So I see it now. I didn't see it then. Yeah. Um, but the fact that I had that, those little touch points in my life kind of makes sense now that I needed to have the the tools to, for myself to cope or my son or my husband. It's, it's quite ironic, but spirit and your loved ones never leave. It is impossible to break the bond of a child and a parent. It is an impossibility. So any parents out there, <laughs> anyone? Oh, I'm thinking we've lost Tammy and I'm really hoping that we haven't um I believe that there just believe Tammy, that are you there. okay I'm you're, there yeah okay your screen froze for a second so <laughs> it's probably in the best look too it's like that. <laughs> uh, so you were saying for any parents that are out there and then at that point it froze so if you can kind of okay back a few steps sure for any parents that are out there um please talk to your child and reach out to them because they want to reach out to you. They will reach out. They want you to be okay. They want you to live. They want you to not stop your life because they are not on this earth. They are here just a little this far away from you. If you reach your furthest reach, they're just that much further, but they're right there. And they want you to live the most joyful, wonderful life. And you're here for a reason. You're still here. So you have a purpose and you may not know what that is yet, but I didn't always know either. And I found out through and the beauty of it over. Are you still there, Tammy? We're just going to give Tammy a few more seconds here to see if her internet comes back in. And I'm really hoping it does because I feel like everything she's sharing is of so much value because she's lived it. It's not, it's not just something that she's learned. It's something that she's actually lived. And her heart is just so um, <clears throat> wide open when it comes to sharing what this story is. Um, so she might be coming back in. I hope so. Wait a few more seconds. This is the joys of technology and also having spirit around while we're using technology is sometimes they make things and we're back again. Yes, so funny. <laughs> I was just saying sometimes when we're working with spirit and when spirit's coming in, um, it's very much it messes with technology and stuff. So hopefully We'll ask spirit to Alicia's allow you really, to really bad with that. So I'm going to have to say to her, step back because Alicia interferes. She <laughs> loves it. She's so excited. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, keep talking, mom. I'm like, I know I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I got cut off. So I apologize if people are listening and getting confused, but uh, I don't know where it cut off. Do you? Um, you were just talking about knowing that your children are right there. So if you're yeah. a parent who's lost a child, and I'm going to put that out there for everybody. If you've lost someone, yeah. they're literally anybody. right there. Oh, I think we've lost her again. I oh, there, are they you back? Want to connect with you. Yeah, they want to connect. They, um, they work really hard to help you hope, have, give you hope and healing. They want you to live. 
you have a purpose, you will find that purpose through the grief. Somehow just look for the light. There's one little light in there. Just try to find that light. Try to believe in your heart of hearts that they would never leave you. They're never, why would they leave me? Well, they haven't left you. But good to grieve, good to cry. It's good to reach out. It's good to, you know, have out side conversations with that person or people that you've lost for sure because they're listening but make sure please put out also I miss you please talk to me please come into my dreams please touch me please leave me a sign ask them for the simplest little things like a purple elephant and then you know what you'll find one on a billboard sign driving down the road and you'll think are you for real but be patient because time doesn't exist over there and it takes a minute, especially if they're newly crossed over. It takes them a minute to get their stuff together. Um, and they're going to do it when it's right for you. And when you're aware and when you're maybe in your darkest moment, like with me, I was in that dark place. And I haven't told anybody that other than my husband that I was ready to end my life. I was done. I, the pain was unbearable. I couldn't do it. And then I thought, how could I be so selfish I have a son, I have a husband, I have a family that loves me, but I was in such grief. It was paralyzing. And I'm sure many people can relate to that that are watching today. Um, but I reached out, just reach out, even if it's through spirit, if it's not if someone on earth, do that. But she saved my life hearing me. And that was the turning point. And I thought, what is going on? And the miracles and the beautiful gifts every day that I receive. There's no way I could feel sorry for myself. I could feel like boohoo me as a mom or any of it. I don't, I, I, I did, but I do not anymore. I'm no longer that victim mother. I am someone that had a beautiful daughter on earth that lived to be 23, that I was proud of every day. And now I'm even more proud. I said, wow, you have about five PhDs in spirit work. Good job. Like, I'm just so proud. I didn't have to pay for it. How awesome is that? <laughs> like she's just, <laughs> such a beautiful soul and so many people she's a very powerful connector and if you open up the more you open up and the more you thank people for the little signs your loved ones even if it's friends some people get really you know upset about a friend or a co-worker it doesn't really matter ask for signs but say thank you and they'll send you more because they're like oh they got it and just the gratefulness living in that gratefulness I'm grateful I know where she is, even though she's passed, I'm still super grateful. I know exactly where she is, yeah. you know, and my heart goes out to people that have lost any loved one and they don't know where they are. I, I don't even know how to talk about that kind of grief, but my heart goes out to them and I send them, if there's anyone watching with that situation, all of my love support and healing that I can possibly send you. Um, but just know you're here for a reason and you have a purpose and it's a beautiful purpose. Just allow it. Don't feel guilty to be alive. Um, don't feel fearful that your life's going to be ruined or you're never going to find joy again or never going to fall in love again or never, um, you know, see like my son got engaged this weekend. So exciting. But I thought, oh, I looked at my husband and I thought, He's thinking I, my little girl, like, you know, this is never going to happen with a leash. And I, I felt it too, but I felt so much joy for him. And she was so much a part of the day. I can go on and on about that the butterflies and the crazy stuff she does. But I asked her, I'm like, Elise, you need to like really show up today. And of course she did. And my son got all the messages and he's a bit, you know, has his moments of, yeah, okay, whatever. But She's so good at it that he's like, okay, I can't ignore this. She's annoying, <laughs> but uh, it's beautiful. So if I can just for sure, let people realize that you can survive the loss of anyone. If you allow yourself the time to heal the compassion towards yourself, the grace enter, let the grace enter your life that is there for you. It's a gift that you are every single one of us are entitled to. And every single one of us has a purpose and has a super important reason to be alive. And I now know through Alicia, really important 
purpose to cross over. So when people cross over, they're needed over there. There's a reason that they're there. We may never, ever understand it. If you never connect with spirit as a medium or a channeler, just try to have faith, if for lack of a better word, belief, faith, um, just there's a reason they're there because there's a lot going on over there. So they are needed and called forward and they are doing beautiful things there and here. And when they come down and connect with us, it takes a lot of work, a lot of love. So when they're giving you the little feather or a dime and someone's like, well, it's just a dime. Well, it was a lot of work to bring that little dime. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. Absolutely. So say thanks for the dime. Next time I'll give you a quarter. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I yeah. say, Leash, what about 50 bucks? Like, what about 50 bucks? <laughs> But, you know, you got to laugh, you know, I just, um, I know people in, in, in early grief, particularly, I have friends, I have family, I have people, including myself have been through, it's such a debilitating, traumatic, um, very emotional time, and you almost don't, you feel out of body and all of these things, but just be kind to yourself, give yourself a minute and reach out to people, and be it a BFO, be it grief counseling, be it mediumship, be it, you know, your church, whoever, your neighbor, somebody don't do um, like just sitting there feeling sorry and down, 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 because, you know, it would be a sad thing if your soul wasn't here when it was really needed here. Yeah. And you're just alone. So try to Listen for the signs in your dreams. Initially, sometimes that's easier because your subconscious is more relaxed and just ask them to come through. If you have, I've noticed some people are scared to talk to their crossed over loved ones. And what I would say to that is if they loved you here, they love you there. They actually love you more there because they don't have all the junk that they had here. Yeah. And they've learned, you know, oh, wow, I didn't do that very well, but now I get it. So the love will be even more powerful. They will help you heal and they will um, cradle you and hold you and make you laugh and all of the beautiful things that go with that. I really encourage people to try it. If, if I mean, there's many other avenues you can try for grief and healing and to get to cope with the loss of a loved one, but for sure, try to speak to them. It's the most beautiful connection. It's just... I have no words for, for that. I, other than it's my oxygen. I always, that's kind of how I go. It kind of gave me life back and it keeps me living. And it's, it's something that I feel like even now talking with yourself and everyone watching, I feel excited about being alive and being here and talking about this. Although it can be a sad topic, I feel really energized and, um, I just feel spirit is so happy that the word is spreading because it needs to be talked about. And it needs, people need to know there is hope. It's not as common as it should be, I think. But I think people now, particularly with this COVID little Zoom world that we have, they're reaching out, which is kind of nice. I think that's a positive thing, yeah. is that you can be in your own home in a storm or in a dark place and reach out and see your face and go, well, look how kind she is and how truthful she is and how she talks about such things. And she has these guests on that are just so... Like it's such a beautiful gift to have that. And I think spirit has its little hand in that too. It's like, you know, we're going to make COVID not as bad. I know it's bad. I know it's rough, but you know what? Here's a little sparkle and I love it. So we have to take advantage of all of those things. Absolutely. I think it's really important. Yeah. And I, I want to go back. I, it was way long ago in oh. the conversation, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, when you said that, that, you know, Alicia is more with you now than what she ever was in life. And Absolutely for myself, that experience was very, it, it resonates with me uh, because my dad, after he passed, it's like our relationship changed and he was my guide to help me get into all of the work that I'm doing. And when he was here on earth, no one would have thought that he'd be a person to guide someone into the work that I'm doing now. So I, I think that's a really important piece of information for people to know about when your loved ones pass and you're stuck in what the grief mm -hmm. is and they're coming in to help you. They're there in a way that mm -hmm. just as the day that you were really struggling and you had those really tough thoughts going through your mind, yeah. if she hadn't been passed, 
and you were still in that spot, she never would have known. That's right. You know, and I feel with myself, what, after my dad passed, there was a lot of dark moments mm -hmm. that I went through. And it was in those dark moments that those signs would come oh. through or the song would come on the radio or whatever. <laughs> and it just it makes you kind of have that hope, like I can keep going on today. Yes, 100%. And I know you've recommended this book in the past, but the Mother's Day that Alicia passed that year, that Mother's Day was a very difficult day for me. Absolutely. My sister and my a friend I've had since I was seven, actually my son's fiance's mother, <laughs> they took me to a retreat because they know it was going to be a really difficult day. And they were my support and they still are. I have many supporters, but there are some rooted people. And they knew Alicia, they were grieving her too. And that, in that moment, there was a lady, a total stranger. And she came over to me and said, I was guided to give you this book from my mother who has passed. And I was like, pardon? And it was Journey of Souls. Mm. And that book changed my life. Again, this was May, this month of May on 2014. Believe me, she was working it. <laughs> it was unreal. I thought, okay, girl, you, you got my attention. But this lovely human, who I don't know her name anymore, I can't remember her, but oh, she was from Guelph though. So lovely person, whoever you, I think it was Christy. Um, she gave me this book and she said, I think you need to read this. And I said, okay. And I did. And oh my goodness. Cause I was wondering what was happening to my daughter's soul right now. What is going on? Is she floating in darkness? Is she warm? Is she happy? Like, oh, the crazy thoughts you would think as a mother, you're like, okay, come here. I can cuddle, whatever. And it explains so much to me and it's fabulous. And there's a show on TV on um, Netflix called uh, afterlife. Mm, yep. Amazing. Right. <laughs> I yep. recommend that if anyone's going through someone that's battling cancer or has passed from cancer or anything, really. My son and I watched it this weekend. It helped him a lot because he still struggles. Um, and my husband and I, it's funny. It's witty. It's intelligent. It's so emotional. It's real. It's amazing. If Those things. And then the book of the afterlife of Billy Fingers. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Right. My daughter got that book dropped in my lap like a month after she passed some random person gave it to me again like nothing's random but unreal and it's there's so much out there the universe wants us to be okay and they want us to be okay yeah so you know even if we're not looking because I wasn't looking for that book I wasn't looking for the other book I wasn't looking for the shows I wasn't looking but they show up because they're working behind the scenes relentlessly to help us and love us and make us go I'm going to embrace this life and you know how excited they are they're like yay like Alicia's Miss Jazz Hands I call her she's always got the jazz hands going she's yeah. hilarious right she's like a fairy flipping around and she's jazz hands which no one uses that term it's kind of old now but <laughs> I still use it through fingers in the era yes, fingers. she's always like mom you're so awesome good job like, I can feel it and it's just so good it just I'm, I'm living to make her proud and in turn it's helping me heal and it's helped my husband always says I live vicariously through you through your healing you're healing me because he's not a kind of guy that'll sit there and meditate and all that stuff he loves it but he you know he's a little bit shy or whatever he's in his head a lot whatever you know men are <laughs> different men are different ways right my son it helps him too and at the end of the day it's like a ripple effect just as the grief is a ripple effect, yeah, the healing is also a ripple effect. So when some, a key person in your life that you trust, certainly, and believe, you know, some people in grief are really all over the place and God bless them for that. That's their space. But there could be someone that's just getting those sparks of, of awareness. And if they share it, it just spreads. Yes. And it's beautiful. And, you know, that really happens. But you need to open up to that. And don't be fearful of that. It's the most fabulous space you'll ever be in in your life. I can assure you it is beyond explanation in this language, but it's wonderful and you can live a beautiful life and have them do their spirit hands and, you know, everyone around you. And then when it's your time is your time, but at least you honored the time you have, be it 
one more year, 10 or 50 more years, honor the gift of your own life. Never feel guilty for being alive. It's, mm -hmm. they're still alive, just different, right? It's yeah. just different. But we're here because we have something to do. Like me, I have something to do. And I know now what it is. And I'm, I've known for a little while, but I've been kind of nervous. So I'm like, ah, it's time. <laughs> so I'm really excited now though. That's good. That's awesome. That's awesome. And do you want to share with us or is it still kind of in secret mode? Um, well, I'm not prepared yet. Uh, spirit's working a little quicker than my normal life. I'm not super technical. So I have a friend that's reached out that does websites. I'm going to have a website. It's going to be angelic intuitive touch. And the reason I said that is because I, angels are where I channel the most. I kind of connect with angels the most always have. Um, it's intuitive. So I'm an intuitive and medium and channeling. I, I've always done numerology and tarot and just, I do healing touch. I've always been someone that I'm in a medical aesthetician as well, but I do just so many things. It's like, I've lived a hundred lives in this 53 year old life that I have, but that's how I like it. Right. It works for me. And this is a whole new life. And it's probably the most exciting part of my life. Believe it or not. It's like, I know my daughter's not here physically, but wow, it is actually the most exciting part of my life. And I've had a really exciting, wonderful life. So for me to say that is like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. So I'm ready to, um, through Zoom and through, I'm going to have that set up. I'm hoping middle of October, it could be sooner. Um, I just have to get myself to, you know, going in and COVID is kind of its own little thing, but I think Zoom is wonderful and it opens the doors. So I'm going to be definitely doing um, card readings and channelings and I'm going to have a price list. I'm going to have all that stuff going on, but um, it's a little bit away from now, but angelic intuitive touch. If you want to email me for sure, I'll be more than happy to discuss things with people and sort of organize stuff, but I will get on it. And this is pushing me. I'm feeling I got to like get cracking a little quicker than October. Right. Are you feeling that? You're oh, totally. I was like, Oh no, he's <laughs> going to this before October. I got a terrible procrastinator with this. I don't know what it is. I guess I just don't let people down, but I know spirit has my back and I know spirit never lets us down. So it's my human side that's kicking in with, you know, my self doubt, but there's so much positive energy around me. I just feel like I'm the horse pulling and I got to run, let me go. Right. So I'm there, I'm there, but uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's all happening. You were part of the journey of that. So I appreciate that you and so many others and so, so grateful. And now I think, I'm going to be stepping into that role for others. And I'm very humbled and honored to do that. And grace, just the grace of feeling that um, I'm trusted to do that is huge for me. Huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, would you mind sharing with people? Because mm -hmm. I know Alicia sends a lot of signs and it seems to always be the biggest question that people have about spirit is nice. around the signs and how do I know if it's a sign or not a sign and mm -hmm. my thought is always if you think it's a sign mm -hmm. it's a sign mm -hmm. um but because Alicia has been so fun and so like I've witnessed it I've seen yeah. the things that have <laughs> happened around you. And I'm like, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Cause she is such a spark. So do you mind sharing with people what some of those signs are that she sent besides the books that people just hand out to you? Yes. Well, um, I, our anniversary of the year she passed, uh, one of her favorite places was the Royal York hotel in Toronto. She passed in Toronto when she was going to school and she ended up living there and she was a self proclaimed crazy cat lady. So cats were her life. She was never having kids. Tyson could do that. She was going to be a good aunt, but no kids. I'm having cats. I'm like, great. Nice to look forward to that. It's so great. So in front of these two huge lines in front of the uh, Royal York Hotel, if anyone's been there, they've been there for years. I was with a friend of mine and her husband. We're trying to celebrate and be happy. And I could feel her energy. And I said, Alicia, you need to show up because I feel you. I need you here today. I'm trying to fake it till I make it and it's not working out. And I need to know you're here because I was still doubting because I'm, you know, when you're in that grief and I'm sure so many people can relate to that, you do feel like you're going a little crazy or you're, you know, you're stuck in these places of poor me or whatever it is. So 
I had a picture taken in front of these lions. So my friend looks at the picture and is like, oh my God, what the heck? And it was an orb that was enormous, absolutely enormous orb. And it was, it looks like an angel. Like it was right on top of the cat, no surprise. And I thought, oh my goodness gracious. And I was like, and she goes, that's Alicia. I said, I know <laughs> it's Alicia. So things like that and things like um, holding my hand when I, on my birthday, like I felt it, I felt a squeeze. And I said to my husband who was, I said, am I awake? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, Alicia's holding my hand. And as a parent, as a person, knowing the person who has crossed, parent, if it's a child or not, there's an energy that is with them. That it's like, so when they're at work, for instance, or they're at school, if it's your child, you still can feel the energy. And it's like, if you think of them, you can see them in your mind's eye, but you can't see them in front of you because they're in school or they're at work. So it's like, you get this, this kind of confirmation energetically it doesn't just randomly come across that holding my hand was her, you know, or the orb was her. I have other people that have crossed prior to her, but the place, the lion, the person I was with, it was our anniversary. It was how I felt beforehand. I just, and then the, the radio, she's chronic with the radio. A couple of Christmases ago, she reached out and um, the song, um, We Are the World. Mm which is, she wasn't even born when that song was on. So I'm like, how do you know this song? Yeah. She says to me, mom, you need to share this song. Everyone needs to hear this song again. It's important, but you don't have enough friends on Facebook. So share it because then they'll share it. Cause you don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> I'm like, thanks a lot. Like she had like 7,000 followers or some crazy thing. And I'm like, I have 75 friends. Okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I thought that song was something that I always resonated with and she didn't even know it when she was, I wasn't even alive. Right. So I go to a, a yoga class a couple of days ago and I was like, you know, thinking, Oh, I got to get in shape, blah, blah, blah. I go there. I'm struggling a little bit. And just, I've been thinking about her a lot. She's been in my head a lot. And then I said, Alicia, you know, I hope you're proud of me. I'm really trying. And the cool down song, we are the world. And I'm like, are you for real? Like, seriously? Yeah. I'm like, Alicia, you rock. Like, come on. You know, these, the coincidences of those things, yes. it's just not possible. It's, it's just, and uh, you know, I've had my son, we had a medium, a really good friend of mine from the very first medium I ever talked to after her. She's a good friend of mine. She came to my home and my son was there and my husband and his now fiance uh, because he was really rejecting any kind of walking through the grief. It was really, and it still is difficult for him. And he was sitting there and he missed, he was very skeptical at that time and very guarded and angry and guilt ridden and all of these things. And he said, Oh my God, Alicia just walked through me, mom. And for him to say that I was like, and then of course my friend said, yes, she did. And you felt it and you acknowledged it. And it overwhelmed him yeah. in the point where, and he's quite the skeptical person in that regard and didn't really want to accept or know that she was okay, that she was near him, that he could actually still talk to her because he couldn't get his head around the fact that he didn't protect her. Mm. She was murdered. I'm the big brother. I should have been there. I should, you know, it's that guilt. Yeah. And we all have it to some degree with whoever, you know, why didn't I stop them from smoking and they had cancer? Why didn't I talk to them more and they, you know, take their own life? There's always these guilt things we're stuck with. It wasn't our job to fix that. It's not broken. Spirit has a plan. We need to trust in the plan. And, and it's hard. But when you do trust and you'll titter totter because we are humans and we're, you know, that's the annoying part, actually. <laughs> it's like, geez, really? This is frustrating. Yeah. But, you know, as we evolve, and open up our, our hearts really. And then our minds and our souls widen and fill up with this beautiful stuff. It's just such a, an incredible world that it just becomes more bright and more beautiful. And you can handle the changes because it's all about change 24 seven. 
And if you can't do that, it's going to be a tougher life. But if you can embrace the little changes, um, and that includes, unfortunately, people crossing, and just know that they're not really dead is not a, it's not a good word. They should just get rid of that word. <laughs> people do not die. They transition, and they uh, evolve, and they have a purpose, and they're so happy. It's just gorgeous. It really is. I mean, I have so many other things I could tell you. I'm just blanking out. Okay. And as soon as I get off here, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I should have said this and this and this. But there's just so, so many of them. Um, and like you said, I agree with you. If you feel it, trust it. You're not making it up. You yeah. know what that energy felt like on earth. It's the same. It's exactly the same. And if it's there, you're like, yeah, I get it. Cool. The wind will blow. You'll feel something, you know, you'll see a, a, a picture, a color, a, a title, a radio, the songs. I mean, the radio songs. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. So fun. <laughs> like yeah. the retreat you, you and Janice had, that was incredible for me. Yes. I was like nonstop. I'm like, are you for what is happening here? <laughs> Did you pick the music? What is going on? Like, it was crazy. And I didn't talk to you guys about any of that. I was a guest. I was like coming. It was amazing. I loved it. Awesome. Yeah. I want to share with you, um, Marilyn has put a comment and she just says, I'm in awe of you listening to you talk oh. about your girl who has passed and how far you have come. I am still grieving for my Catherine who passed from cancer 20 months ago. She was 24. I am really enjoying listening to you right now. You are amazing. Well, my heart goes out to you, Marilyn. And the grief doesn't really end because it's your child. But you know what? She is going to be around you and never ever leave you try to open your heart and believe that if I can give you any advice as a mother grieving mother to another 24 23 you know they're all at that same age where they're just blooming they're just so many things that we can see they could have been they're going to be that and more in spirit that and more in spirit and she will be there for you just talk to her um, even if you're sad, talk to her about how you're sad. What are you missing? What do you uh, want to you know, just pretend she's right beside you in my car. Alicia is there all the time. I'm and she plays with the radio and I'm like, stop that. You did that. It used to irritate me. Can you stop? Like, you know, try to get a little humor in it because she would like not let the song finish. Oh, what about the song? I'm like, oh, my goodness. Really? <laughs> Go in the backseat. What the heck? <laughs> but try to put them in your life as it is today. It's different and it will never be the same, but it can be a, a good different. It can be um, a loving and fun, actually fun different. Really, it's just getting a different relationship that is almost something you never, ever, ever thought about having, but it's the mother or parent connection to your child. You never want to lose it. It's like not normal. It's not something that we should feel but clearly it happens every day we're not the first parent to lose a child um we're not the first person to lose a person um but we all get through it we all survive it in some degree it's important to definitely have um a tribe of people or even one person that you trust with your heart in that space and it may be just your daughter it may be her because I know for me, in my darkest space, I have the most amazing family and a big family. But I didn't go to my husband. I didn't go to my mother, my sister, my son. I went to my daughter, who's crossed. And she was like a rocket ship in there, not putting up with any of that nonsense. She was like, mm -mm. I was like, what is happening? I love it. I felt mothered. And I needed it. I needed it because I was a broken mother and she actually put some of the pieces back together. So please open your heart to that. I hope you do. I hope any of this resonates with, I'm glad it's resonating with you. And thank you for saying that. Um, it makes me feel so honored and humble. And I just, I send you so much love. I send you so much love from a mother to a mother. I get your story. Um, just don't give up on her. Don't give up on yourself either. Don't live in guilt that you're alive and she's not. Don't live in fear that you will never have a great life. Those are the two things that I found I was going into and that I subconscious somewhere in my, my heart, I thought 
this is a wrong thought process. Why am I thinking it? And then I would have my logical mind say, this is why. And I thought, and then there's people on the outside that kind of make you feel sometimes, not purposely, but that how can you be, oh, you poor thing. And oh my goodness, I couldn't live with this. I could never live with myself. And, and they don't mean it in a bad way. They just don't know what to say. And that's, that's truly how they feel. And truly before Alicia passed, I probably would have said that too. You know, how, how could I live without my daughter? But I can, and I am, and it's a greatest life. And I'm living with her 100%, Marilyn. I'm living with her. So know that in your heart. And I hope even a little bit of a spark of hope comes into your soul with that. And she will, um, the minute you call on her, she's going to be there giving you a snuggle. I know it. And irritating your life. Don't, she's going to be the same as she was on earth. If she was a bad bugger, like my little one, sarcastic and just go shopping that no heart to heart talks, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. So try to enjoy her, even where she is now. She's enjoying you and guiding you for sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. And just as one last question. Okay. I, this is the question I put out to all of the speakers. If you could offer the world one piece of wisdom based on what your experiences have been, what piece of wisdom would you want the world to hear right now? No one dies. No one, death is not real. It's as simple as that. It is really, we've been brought up and taught that death is done. You're done. Energy is eternal. We're all made up of energy. We learn that in science. If you have any kind of spiritual, religion, any kind of background, doesn't, if you learn that in science, think of science. Everything is energy. Nothing ever stays still. That's why change is inevitable. Um, including us and our souls are eternal. They keep going and going and going. And the soul is where the beauty is. It's not in the body. This is the suitcase as my mother calls it. Everyone gets a different suitcase every lifetime. You know, we all have a different suitcase and eventually you got to pitch it out. <laughs> it starts to give up. Right. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the soul is eternal and death is not real. I wish that word was gone. I, I've used it a few times this evening and I apologize, but I know that's what people resonate with as, as the dark side of it all, but no, the soul is eternal. Love is eternal. Life is eternal. It is. So just try to remember that we will one day be in that space, but right now, this is where we need to be in this energetic space and embrace that. It's just a beautiful gift and it's a gift both ways, you know, just Take a deep breath and open your heart. Let them let them creep their way in there because they will. It's the best thing ever. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much, Tammy. And thank you so much for sharing. You've got so many comments on here. I'm going to invite oh. you to come over to Journey Healers after you get off oh. the live so you can read all of the comments that everyone is writing and just the inspiration that you've brought forward for so many people tonight. Oh. So, Well, I can't believe it's already an hour. Number one, I, I just, when I start going, it's going, <laughs> but I thank you all for listening, for taking your time. And Catherine, thank you. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and for your, you in my life. 100%. Ditto. Yeah. Take all care. Right. So if anybody wants to connect with Tammy, you can connect with her at angelic intuitive touch at gmail.com. Her website and her Facebook page are both going to be up prior to October. <laughs> yes, I'm going to work on that now. I'm getting the push. <laughs> so if anyone's wanting to connect with her and to have a healing or mediumship or anything like that, by all means, feel free to reach out to her. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, yeah. Next Tuesday night, we're going to have John Pogachar on talking to us about love on every billboard. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation. And thank you again, Tammy, for having. Thank you, too, my friend. Have a wonderful night. Thank you, everybody, for listening.